Lesson 2.1D, Zero and Negative Exponents. Zero exponents can be confusing. It'll help if you take notes or screenshots of the rules and examples. It'll also be helpful to remember the three power rules for exponents and the quotient rule for exponents. We went over this in the last video. Let's review it. Aside from the product rule for exponents, that's the rule that says if we have like bases and we're multiplying, we just add the exponents. There are three power rules for exponents. The first one says this variable a that is raised to the m power and raised to the n power, we just multiply these together and we do a to the m times n. The second power rule says if we have a, b, whatever they stand for inside the parentheses, and it's raised to the m power. This m exponent affects everything inside of the parentheses. So we have a to the m times b to the m. And the third power rule for exponents says that this m affects the a numerator and the b denominator, so it's equal to a raised to the m over b raised to the m. The quotient rule for exponent states for any non-zero number, a, and any integers, m and n, that would be the exponents, we subtract exponents with like bases. So if we have a to the m over a to the n, we have a like base here, they're both a, we would have a to the m minus n, and our example would be 2 raised to the fifth power over 2 raised to the third power, we just do 5 minus 3, we get 2 to the second power. And the zero exponent rule states for any non-zero number, a raised to the zero power is going to equal 1. So whatever a is, if it's raised to the zero power, it's equal to 1 as long as a is not zero. So if you saw 12 to the zero power, that equals 1. Remember, negative exponents make positive fractions. So if we were to subtract and get a negative exponent, then that would make a positive fraction. The zero exponent rule says for any non-zero number a, a raised to the zero power is equal to one. a cannot be zero, remember. So here we have 12 raised to the zero power, it's equal to one. And here we have a negative 12 inside parentheses with the zero exponent on the outside of the parentheses. The exponent affects each and everything within the parentheses, the negative and the 12. This whole thing is going to be equal to 1. Now here we have a negative 12, but there's no parentheses. This exponent is affecting the 12. So we have a negative and then a 1, it's negative 1. Here we have 12x raised to the 0 power. This 0 is only affecting this x, not the 12. It only affects the base it is next to. That means we have 12 times 1, that's equal to 12. And here we have x raised to the 0 power, that's equal to 1. Here we have 12x within parentheses raised to the 0 power. This 0 is going to affect everything inside of the parentheses. So we have 12 to the 0 power times x to the 0 power. Well, that means we have 1 times 1, and that's equal to 1. The exponent affects each and everything within parentheses. Now, these two can get very confusing, so I would advise you to write down parentheses negative 12, parentheses raised to the 0 power equals 1, and negative 12 raised to the 0 power equals a negative 1 in parentheses equals negative 1, and why? And Maybe then you can remember that, but that would be very helpful on a test or in homework. We can derive, that means trace to a source or origin, the definition of zero exponent. We can use the properties, the rules of exponents, and the properties, the rules of division with a raised to the n power to show that a to the zero power is equal to one. We've got like bases and this is a raised to the n power over a raised to the n power. Well, anything divided by itself is equal to 1. We have the same numerator and denominator, so that's equal to 1. 
And using the quotient rule, we subtract exponents. So since we have like bases, we can say a to the n minus n. We have a to the zero power, and that's the zero exponent rule. It equals one. Using the property of exponents for dividing powers with the same base, the quotient rule, a to the n minus n, we show it's equal to one. The transitive property of equality states for any real numbers, a, b, and c, if a equals b, and the b is equal to c, well, then a is equal to c. If a is equal to this b, and the b is equal to c, well, then they're all equal to each other. Then a is equal to c. So here's an example. If 2 times 6 is equal to 12, and 12 is equal to 3 times 4, well, then 2 times 6 is equal to 3 times 4. Using our zero property, if we have n raised to the zero power, and it's equal to n to the a power over n to the a power, and this n to the a power over n to the a power is equal to 1, well, then n to the zero power is equal to 1. So remember, we would do subtraction. We would subtract the a from the a and get a zero. That's how we got that. Now you're going to come across the transitive property of equality a lot in algebra and geometry. So if you can understand this concept, it's going to really help you, okay? Now let's talk negative exponents. We can use the definition and properties, the rules for exponents, with a raised to the fourth power over a raised to the sixth power to show that a to the negative second power is equal to 1 over a to the second power. So we have a positive fraction here, and this negative sign went away because we put it in a fraction as the denominator. And we know from the quotient rule that we can just subtract. We do 4 minus 6. Well, that's a negative 2. So that's how we got that negative 2 exponent. If we wrote these out, we would have 4 factors of a and 6 factors of a, and we could cancel them out as same numerator and denominator, so we'd have a lot of 1s. So we'd have 4 1s in the numerator and 4 1s in the denominator times a times a. So this would be 1 over 1 times a is a times a. That would be a times a. That's a to the second power. A negative exponent will make a positive fraction. When we divide like bases, we subtract the denominator's exponent from the numerator's exponent. We subtract this exponent from this exponent. So we would have 2, we have like bases, we have 2 raised to the 4 minus 7th power. 4 minus 7 is a negative 3. We have 2 raised to the negative 3. That's going to be a positive fraction with a 1 over a 2 to a positive 3 exponent, see? which would be 1 over 2 times 2 times 2, which would be equal to 1 eighth. In order to get a negative exponent after subtracting, the denominator's exponent must be greater than the numerator's exponent. 7 is greater than 4. As we progress into higher levels of math, textbooks may use different names for properties and rules. The multiplication property of exponents is also called the product rule for exponents. You may see that in an Algebra 1 book. The division property of exponents is also known as the quotient rule for exponents. You may see it called this in an algebra book in high school. The property of zero exponents is also the zero exponent rule. Now hopefully this will help you avoid confusion in the future. You'll say, oh, I'm familiar with that rule or property. We're finished with 2.1 and we're going to move on to 2.2. And as you can see, it's about scientific notation. We do a little standard notation, but it's mostly about scientific notation. If you forgot to take notes or take screenshots of the three power rules, the quotient rule, or the zero exponent rule, you can go back, rewind, and take some screenshots because they're really going to help you as we move forward. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I hope you join me for part 2.2. .2. Bye.